Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I've got a best of one game, it is between teams properties Snuff, Snuffy, Snuff, Snuff, I'm going to go with Snuff as the red tone player in the lower right and in the top left we do have Orc, the blue Zerg, that means we've got a TVZ and that should be great fun, it's on a Hana which means the natural base is really easy to take, the third blocked off by those rocks in the middle, two nice avenues of attack either side of the watchtowers and then quite natural progression through the bases but limiting to five possible expansions per player really. Um, what can we expect in terms of strategy from these two? Well from the Terran I reckon we'll see a one rack CC it's really the solid meta game opening from Terran at the moment against Zerg. It works so well, it puts, gives you a good defense, allows you to put on a little bit of pressure when you go into reactor Hellions and maybe even a Banshee, gives you good economy, and it puts the Zerg in an awkward spot because Zerg go 15 hatch, 16 pull, then obviously they're on equal bases, so do they go for a third? Do they just try and do some kind of two base pressure, Roach Baneling for example, or do they just get a macro hatch and try and out drone their opponent well lots of different options and all of them very very viable so I can't wait to see which orc decides to go for now I am battling through a bit of a cold so I apologize if my voice is slightly weird or if I sneeze or cough at all through this cast but I'm trying to keep up with the daily content I put out and have done for the last well near eight months now so do not do not fear, I will hopefully recover quickly. Now, actually looking here, it looks like Snuff is going to go for a command center first opening. Very, very bold move. Ahan is a good map to do it on, though, because you've got this very, very narrow area here. If you follow up this command center with two barracks, you can get a decent number of marines out relatively quickly and have a good defense position. Obviously, the drone will scout exactly what's coming down. We've got two SCVs being pulled to deal with that scout very, very quickly. No gas will be taken from either player for quite a while. I have no doubt of that and well there we go with the barracks we should see a second barracks follow up I think that is usually the most solid way of doing it you can just get the one in the aim to then get down the double gas go into a factory get a reactor hellions etc but I think getting the two barracks is just slightly safer because some Zerg players would see this and really as soon as that finishes don't get any more drones and just flood Zerglings which can be very very effective especially if the Terran has been this greedy you get quite a few Zerglings who basically knock out that base and there's not much the Terran can do. Now the gas coming down does suggest that actually we're going to be seeing just the one barracks at the moment going into reactor Hellions. Looking up here for Orc, obviously we do have the spawning pool nearly done, the hatchery nearly done. They'll finish up a relatively similar time. Double queen production will then start. I think don't stop at two queens, get three, maybe even four off two bases because then you spread that creep. And on Ohana, you can literally just have a wave of creep going down either end and be like down here at about 12 minutes, which is just so good because Terran players don't like engaging on creep. The second their tank marine kind of mid-game composition gets there, they're like, oh dear, creeps everywhere. And it just slows them down, it gives you an early warning, it gives you great map vision, it gives your units greater speed. Creep is good is really what I'm trying to get at here. Anyway, factory on its way down. The barrack should start that reactor as soon as there's enough gas for our Terran buddy here. The first orbital com two orbital commands are morphing in, so this is all good. We'll have a double mule cooldown. And, well, looking at this, 23 to 19 workers. Snuff should have the better income just due to the fact that he does have mules. If we take a look here, actually, Orc is up there a bit higher, but then that's because he hasn't got no gas income as of yet. So, obviously, that's going to allow the tech to come on. Now, we do have the first two gas coming down. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, why is the gas at the natural being taken first? The reason being is, should the Terran poke up in, they'll see two gas. If they get stopped before they get to the main, they'll be like, is this two gas or four gas? Four gas and two gas are very, very different in the early game as two bases. For for any of the races to be honest but especially for Zerg if it was four gas I'd be thinking ah lots of roaches lots of banelings possibly even mutilists coming in threats everywhere now it looks like snuff is gonna go for that banshee place so he's gonna get reactor hellions out of the factory and reactor obviously and then the starboard is gonna get switched with this barracks about to build a tech lab to get out those banshee the biggest decision that the Terran has in this situation is do I get cloak or not I'm very much of the opinion that I think it's better without cloak, purely by the, it's like getting DTs. DTs are great if you get one, um, if they've got detection, oh well, if you get two, it's like, uh, I really hope they don't get detection any more than that, and you're like, if they've got detection, you've wasted loads of loads of resources. The same with banshees, to be honest, you're investing quite a lot of resources just getting the banshees and delaying other tech options, but, th against Zerg, I mean, unless they've got spore crawlers down, 
it's quite awkward for the queens because even when you get this nice walling off position we're seeing here from Orc with the double Evo and the four queens, the queens have to run around quite a bit in order to pick off the banshees. Um, then you've got hellions coming to the front and it can be awkward. Whereas once you start getting our cloak as well, then you're really hoping that they don't have spore crawlers because then you can just have a nightmare and you've invested even more. It delays the push, but judging by the fact Cloak hasn't started yet, we're not going to see that out of snuff yet. Now, looking around, obviously, a nice supply depot wall off being built here at the moment. That Overlord does see the... Uh, well, basically, the Banshees will be coming down. No more Queen production being started yet. The W bow are there. We may possibly see a Spore Crawler chuck down at each base. You can see, obviously, which a lot of people don't know, is on the tech lab. You can see if it's actually researching something, which a lot of people aren't actually aware of. So definitely something to be keep in mind that it shows when it is researching. So that's how you can know where the cloak is coming on. The third base for Orc is on its way down, but a bunker there for Snuff. That's going to be irritating the Banshee coming over as well. There's quite a few Zerglings here, but there's also a Banshee, and Zerglings do not shoot up. The Hellions coming in the front, but the Queens are still there. The two Queens are going to be quite irritating, but in come all of the Hellions, and a lot of those Hellions get through. The drones are all clumping together. Big damage being done by these Hellions, but the Zerglings do manage to get us around, and, well, they are managing to shut this down very, very well for the moment. A lot of Zerglings are getting killed, though. The Hellions are finally getting cleaned up. How successful was that? Well, six workers killed. That does mean that Orc is now behind in terms of the worker count, but not for long. This third base is really what's going to be helpful. Four queens on their way over now. That does mean no injects are on their way, though. That is always the downside, but four queens will do very, very good damage to a banshee very, very quickly. Now, taking a look here, another banshee is joining in the mix. We do have some marines just wandering around. What are they up to? A third base on the way out for snuff as well. Looking around here, he's getting up another factory, getting some really going mech play which is getting oh the more common in TVZ because a lot of Terran players basically feel if you're going for that Hellion Banshee harassment play if it keeps the Zerg back it stops them getting up their death ball or coming to attack you in the mid game which means you've got time to build up that huge terrifying mech army which really the Zerg struggles to deal with. Now, as a Zerg player, how do you deal with mech? Well, if you can't kill it early on, which is the preferred option because it's weak then, then you really go into the late game, and the way you engage a mech death ball is if there's lots of Thors and not many tanks, you get loads and loads of roaches. If there's lots of tanks and not many Thors, then you have to start looking at things like lots of Zerglings, Banelings, couple of roaches thrown in Mutalist can also be effective. I think one thing which a lot of Zerg players don't utilize as well as they could is Neural Parasite because basically that allows you to grab up Thors and tanks and deal damage to the Terran army itself. That's very effective. Obviously there are lots of tanks as well. Broodlords are super effective because it forces the Unsiege and then you just laugh as you win. And of course you can see here Orc is about to finish up with his Spire. He doesn't have yet an infestation pit down as far as I can see. So I'm not going to be going up to that hive tech anytime soon. So I expect to see some Mutalisks because otherwise that Spire has been gone way too early and for no real purpose. The 2-2 two -two upgrade on the way up for Orc, looking up here for Snuff, he is getting a 1-1 upgrade, as well as the blue flame two Thors on, on their way. Now these Banshees and Hellions are just being very irritating more than anything else. There's nothing really other than these Zergies on the field, but obviously one Banshee taken out down there. The Hellions are getting cleaned up by the Zergies, the Queen gets picked off, now those two Banshee are going to be able to go to pretty much to town on the drone line. It should get quite a few kills here, they are running away, want to get close to the Queens. Two Queens are there, two Queens against two Banshees. The Queens will win that fight just, but obviously this is a lot of drones getting picked off. The Banshees need to be careful, one on very low health, but now the Mutalists go out. Those two Banshees are going to get shut down incredibly hard, but 16 workers killed. And that does still mean that Snuff is ahead in the worker count. And when you factor in mules to that as well, this is really looking in the Terran's favor. A lot more red than blue right there. Obviously, these Banshees will now go down. Missile Tower is being instantly chucked into production out of the Terran. So great play there, building some third as well. The Thors are going to really help counter the Mutalisks as well. Wow, this is a lot of mute, uh, missile turrets. Seven missile turrets. Maybe a bit of overcommitment against what is essentially not that many muters. Yet more are on the way. A baning nest coming down here for Orc. He still has no infestation bit though, which is a bit of a concern to me. You need to start getting that infestation bit a bit earlier. The hatchery coming down, and the reason I like that infestation bit sooner is because that's how you get into the hive check. That Thor doing huge splash damage to those mutalisks, and Orc needs to be careful with those, otherwise he could take huge damage. But generally, the creep spread is okay. He could be a bit better, but he's under a lot of pressure. That infestation pit on its way down now. I'm looking around at what else. I mean, 
the only thing you can really start thinking about doing here is multi prong attacks, but the naturalist completely walled off. It's why Ahan is quite nice for Protoss and Terran because you can just wall off and defend here. Those muters are not going to have a fun time getting into the main base. There's just too many missile turrets. And you may be thinking, why is the Terran going for so much static defense? Well, the reason being is once you get that mech army up to near maxing, it's so difficult to deal with that you just may as well play safe. And also, minerals are usually what end up banking up in the mech. So, looking here, these headings are going to start doing really big damage to the drone line. And I must say, Snuff is doing an amazing job of just being really irritating. Also, doing the best thing he can, which is to spread out the drones so they don't line up anywhere and hope that the Hellions don't kill that many but if we take a look here 32 workers killed and orc really quite a long way behind but he is taking a double expansion right now that could really pay off and it's the sort of risk you have to be taking in this situation hive has just been started so that's going to be out well not for a couple of minutes yet but about 15 minutes of quite late hive timing tend to see him more around the kind of 13 minute mark against and against mech you do need those tier 3 units ASAP in my opinion these muters need to be careful because a lot of Thors are on their way over and that can start dealing some big damage are they going to clump up oh no those muters taking so many volleys from the Thors that is some big losses if we look at the loss tab Orc really not engaging cost effectively at the moment these Hellions taking the advantage for they are 1-1 one, one, of course 2-2 two, two, about to kick in as well so this is a nice little timing out of snuff he is going to be going in with those 2-2 two, two upgrades that is up against of course the 2-2 two, two upgrades for Orc and Zerg, but looking here, so many creatures units getting taken out. This is great play. The Mutalisks going to have to start being annoying. That one Viking going to pick things off. Four Thors in production at a time. Level three vehicle Terran plate coming down. Those Roaches are not in significant enough numbers to deal with this many Thors, unfortunately. All the drones being pulled, and this could be game. The, the Hellions just roasting so many drones right now. The Thors picking off the Mutalisks. All the Roaches getting taken down. 60 workers killed. We're now at 76 to 54 workers in the Terran play with the third base about to go down. Those doors doing absolutely immense damage at plus two weapons. And now it's just straight up to the natural. Some more roaches getting pumped, really just massing up roaches, which is the only option available to Orc at the moment. Um, really against this many Thors it could be very difficult to deal with. Roaches do need to cuddle up and get as close as they can to the Thors to focus them down. So good job here. As the numbers start getting down, Orc has got a better chance because obviously his resupply will be a lot quicker than that of his opponent. These Roaches are still going at it and the Thor numbers now down to three. No SCVs have been pulled to repair these which could be classed as a mistake obviously with mech if you can get the repair in it can be ever so helpful. Now it's just the two Thors. These Roaches should be able to clean up the, at least the next wave will, but Orc GG's out. He sees the reinforcements coming in across the map and knows that there is nothing that he can do. So guys, if you did enjoy the cast, please thumbs up, like the video, leave a cool comment, subscribe because I get new games up daily, and if you want any more StarCraft, flick over to my channel for the hundreds of videos I have got up already. If not, and you've seen them all, I'll see you tomorrow for yet another new game. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I was Maddles. This was an SC2 England cast. Bye for now.